everyone. Zach here from Canva. I uh, was one of the early team uh, at Canva based in Sydney, Australia. And uh, when MAD reached out, we thought uh, one of the, the great topics that would be of interest to share today is uh, sharing some lessons from hypergrowth. And so we are an Australian company. We've been around for about eight years now and have had a, uh, a pretty crazy uh, journey along the way. And so we started Canva with this mission really to democratize design and to make it accessible to everyone around the world. And I guess when people ask why now, uh, all you have to do is, is look around you. And it's uh, true that the world is becoming you know, more visual than, than ever before. Um, whether that's looking at social media content, um, you know, the usage of, of uh, devices and, and all these sorts of things. The trend is that we're becoming more and more visual. It's now the default for impactful communication. Um, simply look at, uh, you know, the, the social media platforms around you and, uh, you know, it's all backed up by, by science as well. Um, when we see content communicated visually, uh, it's more likely to be remembered too. And rewind all the way back to the start and, uh, you know, pre-Canva, this is what it looked like when you're needing to create a design and it was actually while teaching you know, uh, design at university that our co-founder and CEO uh, Melanie Perkins came up with the idea for Canva. And so we launched with a simple and easy to use design platform for everyone with a whole lot of templates. Uh, we've got more than 100 million pieces of content. Uh, it's really, really easy to customize and create whatever you want. And I guess in terms of our growth, we've been uh, on, a, on a pretty crazy journey since uh, launching in, in 2013. So we're now just over 1,600 employees in offices all around the world. Uh, we've tipped over 50 million monthly active users, so 50 million people designing with Canva each and every month in more than 190 different countries. We've had 5 billion uh, designs created and we're doing uh, over 500 million in, in revenue as well. And so today, hopefully what I can do is share a little bit more about what it's been like behind the scenes and I guess some of the lessons that we've learned uh, in terms of, of Canva's growth that you might be able to apply uh, your, yourselves as well. And so getting into it, the first lesson I wanted to share was one that we've learned and it's really about building a great product and uh, consciously saying here, not for your community, but with your community. And, and this is something that we've done since the very, very early days. And so prior to launch, uh, we closed our funding rounds and uh, at this point, we had some really interesting news, I guess, in that it was the largest seed funding round that had ever been raised by an Australian company. And uh, Mel and Cliff had uh, successfully raised that money um, in, in, a, in a quirky way, uh, meeting a whole bunch of people through a kite surfing network. And so uh, prior to us actually, uh, you know, launching Canva, we announced our funding round and uh, we're able to create some hype and buzz about what was coming. We didn't tell anyone what we were up to, but we talked about, you know, this vision to transform design. And what that meant was that by the time we actually launched, uh, we'd had more than 50,000 people pre-register on our waiting list. And, and we were able to, you know, reach out and give people early access and, and learn from our community uh, as we went along. Back in the beginning, one of the first things we did with some of those people on the waiting list was started to do design workshops. And we found this was an amazing way uh, you know, Mel, Cliff, Cam, myself, some of the other early team would actually get into uh, the library. This is our original boardroom um, in our, our tiny sort of first office in Surrey Hills. We actually teach people the program, uh, teach them how to design. And let me tell you that there is no better uh, feedback that you're going to get by trying to you know, show someone uh, and getting that really candid feedback um, there and then. And this helped us really refine our product onboarding experience. Um, realize where people struggled and, and sort of iterate the product too. And, and early on, we realized that uh, social media creators were actually one of, uh, you know, the, the groups that had the greatest need to create content. Uh, they're creating content, you know, all of the time across different platforms in different formats and the expectation is to be able to get stuff out quickly. And so early on, we really started to focus on that early niche of uh, social media and, and content creators and, and built out content around that. And that really helped us unlock uh, an amazing community that we've grown to today. There's literally, it's mind blowing, there's literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of videos that have been posted, courses created, uh, you know, all sorts of, uh, all sorts of content on online. Um, and, and we've really set out to foster that community um, through our Canvas Certified Creatives program. Uh, 
it really boggles my mind. This is uh, just one example of someone that, uh, you know, went out and created some content. This is a TikTok video, uh, someone showing how they designed their new desktop wallpaper. There's literally, uh, you know, uh, all sorts of content like this. And, and this one had, it blows my mind, a million likes, um, you know, alone on TikTok. And we've also taken that approach, I guess, with uh, not just consumers, but also enterprises. And so this screenshot is actually uh, uh, the first prototype, really, of uh, what has now become our Canva Pro product. And so it would have been, you know, maybe 2015. Uh, we actually got a, a tweet, I think it was, from uh, one of the designers at Huffington Post sort of reaching out and saying uh, they had this problem where they were creating a lot of content uh, across the team but were struggling because the tools were difficult to use and they had stuff going out with the wrong logo and different colors and fonts. And so they reached out and said, can you help us? And uh, fortunately, uh, I was actually going to be over in New York. And so I went and met up with the team and we sort of talked through and, uh, you know, we had templates in uh, Canva at the time and, and realized, you know, what they were looking for was their own custom uh, templates. And so we hacked this together and created a bunch of templates, uh, you see for the Oscars here and a few other things um uh there and, and basically we put these together and put them on a wordpress page and and internally uh, at huffo other uh, teams were able to just click on you know any of the links on this page and then you know remix and, and create their designs in canva and uh that functionality was our first prototype of, of as i said our canva pro products uh which uh looks a little bit better these days um and is uh, you know, largely uh, contributing to uh, our, our 500 million plus um, business as well. And I'm very, very proud to say uh, we've kept teaching along the way. And this is actually a photo of our brand new uh, canvas space under our office in Sydney. And so, you know, as we've grown, we've got 1600 plus people now. Uh, but every week we've actually started running live workshops uh, in the canvas space where different people from our team can actually teach and get exposed to uh, community feedback and things like that. And we can open the doors up uh, to, to spread uh, spread the love with our community there as well. The second lesson I wanted to share was uh, building on some of the, the, the sort of advice just there, starting niche and going wide. And this has been something that we've tried to do all the way along, where it's focusing on social media marketers first and then expanding uh, you know, all the types of content that you can create in Canva. And so we started as that social media tool. Uh, it's a little bit embarrassing to show um, this very, very first uh, version of Kevin. You can see there wasn't a lot you could create there. Uh, uh, we've since expanded, you know, a, a huge amount. So now you can create anything from presentations through the marketing materials, documents, websites, uh, even things like printed mugs and, and t-shirts these days. And we've uh, we've really, you know, expanded from that first niche and uh, actually. It's a stat that surprises many people, but presentations is now our largest use case. So we have had more than 250 million presentations that have been created using Canva, uh, which is uh, yeah, crazy to think about, but it's more than 600 every minute um, now. Uh, we've also expanded, you know, the, the features and, and functionality as we've learned more, you know, beyond Huffington Post with uh, branding has been really, really important for, for people. And so we've been able to set up our our functionality so you can actually save your brand colors and fonts um, and you know easily create content on uh, on brand within Canva. We uh, it was really interesting I guess through COVID for us uh, really understanding you know this this sort of major shift that that happens uh, as people were going uh, largely on online and, and remote and for us that meant really asking what were the things that we could do to support the community and so over the past a uh, few months we've uh, accelerated and rolled out things like the ability to collaborate in real time and uh, you know work together uh, remotely as well and through focusing on those things and, and really you know listening to the community uh, i guess we've uh you know moved into uh, that enterprise space as well and so canva is now used by uh, more than 85 percent of the fortune 500 uh, companies around the world another example of where we've really tried to focus on a niche, first of all, uh, is as we've, uh, we've focused on the enterprise as well. And so uh, probably about 18 months ago, we really started to look at, you know, who actually had the greatest use case for visual content and identified newsrooms as one of uh, those verticals. And so set out to create 
uh, I guess a bit of a, um, a, a squad internally, a Tiger team focusing on uh, this vertical, really understanding newsrooms, how can we actually support them? And so we set out to create a whole lot of content and templates. This is actually um, some real examples from a, a TV network uh, here in Australia, Channel 10, uh, who produce uh, all of their visual content now in Canva. And uh, as we, we sort of have demonstrated with 10, we've, uh, we've actually expanded and, and now have been adopted by newsrooms all around the world. Uh, and really, uh, you know, growing into that vertical of newsrooms. And I guess like we've we moved from social media into other content types, we've started to set our sights on other verticals and really establishing ourselves in sports and figuring out how Canva can come to life uh, there, you know, real estate and others and beyond. Uh, so that was lesson number two. But lesson number three is thinking global from day one. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, something that, that's really core to, I guess, our DNA as a company. Uh, what you can see here is one of our values, which is to set crazy big goals and make them happen. And we certainly did that with our approach to international too. And so rewinding a few years uh, back, we were, you know, thinking through what, where do we focus next? And, and I guess we realised uh, or stumbled across this insight uh, that only 25% of the world's internet population actually use the internet in English. And more and more people are coming online uh, in languages other than English every single day. And so we set out the crazy big goal uh, to localize the product. Uh, and, uh, you know, to start with, uh, we set our sights on being in 100 languages. Uh, and this was a mammoth feat. And, and we, we broke it down like we tend to do into uh, smaller goals as well. And so in 2015, we, we set out on, on that journey. And I think by the end of the year, had set the goal of launching in Spanish as our first uh, language other than English. And that meant the whole team had to get in, on board. We needed to rewrite our code base. We needed to um, figure out how to hire translators. We needed to create content. Um, and we worked out a lot of those foundations there. The next year, we, we upped the goal uh, to 20 languages and then 100 languages, which were available in now today. And I guess as we've thought about that, we've, uh, we've gone deeper and deeper. So early on, it was about being available and, and being uh, accessible in that local language. And then it's been about, you know, getting, getting more and more local. And so uh, examples of that would be in uh, Japan, for example, the, the primary messaging platform is actually Line. And so we need to surface that as a, uh, as a sort of integration and, and some way that people can publish uh, their content. You know, in Russia, VK is one of the biggest social networks. And so we've, tried to uh tried to evolve the product in that way as well we've also had to build canvas international content library uh if you're in mexico uh you know you're wanting to see day of the dead uh, content or in india it might be holy and so having that local content experience is really really critical to feeling uh, like a truly local brand wherever you are in the world and very proud to say uh that all those efforts over the past few years uh, has completely changed uh, the nature of our community around the world. And actually more than 80% of uh, people don't use Canva in English these days. The fourth and final lesson I wanted to share with you today is around scaling culture. Um, so this is actually a photo uh, in our second office. So it was a little bit bigger than that first one that I showed you. And um, we were celebrating getting our first million signups. And so uh, something that we've done all the way along has been to celebrate uh, achieving those big goals. And so uh, I said, you know, earlier, one of our values is to set crazy big goals and make them happen. Uh, another thing that we like to do is to set crazy big goals and then celebrate. And so uh, early on, I think uh, there was a bit of talk, you know, in the, in the corridor in the office uh, as we hit that million uh, uh, signups and, and, you know, the question was, how do we actually celebrate? And so, uh, one of the engineers on the team uh, was uh, a fan of the local schnitzel restaurant around the corner. And so we started this transition tradition where we'd actually go every million users and we'd, uh, we'd all go out as a team. Of course, uh, the team got bigger and bigger. And so I think at some point we no longer fit in the restaurant um, and we had to start to scale how we celebrated things as well. Uh, but that whole idea of celebrating really comes back to, uh, you know, a, a bit of a philosophy for us uh, internally. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you have read this book. Uh, feel free to uh, to share if you have. Uh, but there is an anecdote uh, in here. This book uh, is uh, The Power of Moments. It's fantastic if you haven't uh, had a chance to read it. And what it really talks about is the importance of creating 
you know, those real peak memories for people. People tend to remember either the worst or the best. Uh, and, and, you know, a, a lot of the time uh, we can create magical experiences by really uh, making them memorable. And so one of my favorite examples in the book is uh, the Magic Castle Hotel. And so at the time the book was written, this was actually the second most rated, highly rated uh, hotel on, on TripAdvisor. And you wouldn't think it from looking at the pictures, but uh, they really focused on making the experience magical. And so to give you a bit of a sense for that, when you show up uh, at the hotel to check in, there's a magician uh, you know, juggling in the, in the foyer. Um, you go to your room, there's a phone you can call to order any snacks that you want. By the pool, they have a special red popsicle hotline. You can call and order uh, your flavor, favorite flavor of popsicles, et cetera, et cetera. And, and what they've really done is, is make uh, an experience of, of staying there. And that's something that we uh, try and do, you know, as we think about all aspects at Canva. And so we've done that um, over the years. This is when we launched our uh, iPhone uh, an iPad app. We uh, we did a special um, Apple theme day where we all dressed up as uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, for uh, during COVID, obviously we uh, were all uh, online and at home. But as a marketing function at Canva, we were doing some of the you know the, the biggest projects that we ever done. We launched our first uh, ad campaign in the US. Uh, it was a test in uh, ten cities, and so we did a virtual road trip with everyone once the ad was out, and um, we actually got people from our team to act as the, uh, the tour guide. Um, and we did a virtual tour over, uh, over Zoom, which was a whole lot of fun. And we sent out different, you know, different things for different activities uh, along the way as well. One of the more bizarre traditions that we've had at Canva, this is uh, a video of uh, our early birthday celebrations. Um, at one point, if it was your birthday, you used to uh, have to step up onto uh, a table while the whole company would, would move around and sing you happy birthday. Um, the only thing that, you know, weirder than watching the video is actually uh, experiencing that yourself. Um, but again, we, uh, we did get too big at some point and so had to evolve. And so uh, we moved to a birthday wheel. And so now when it's your birthday, uh, if you're in the office, um, when our offices were open, you would be able to spin the wheel and you'd get a special surprise. Um, we took that online as well. And I guess for me personally, uh, you know, it's been a, a, an interesting journey and um, you know, so much fun being part of Canva. Um, I actually had my eighth year anniversary uh, just just recently, and uh, got a bit of a surprise. I got called down to that Canva space I was uh, was talking about, uh, and a whole bunch of uh, the team were actually there, uh, and got me and Jim. Jim and I actually started on the same day, so got up and did that very same ceremony for our eighth year anniversary. Um, and I guess at that point, you know, I, I realised that. Uh, you know, some of those aspects of our culture have continued and uh, it's so uh, so nice to, to see that um, continue even as we have uh, scaled as a company as well. And so uh, just on that, I hope uh, some of those lessons have been useful for uh, you uh, as you think about your own uh, journeys and please feel free to, uh, to reach out as well. Thanks so much.